Quick note before the show, we did some digging in the past performances and we've uncovered a new angle. What we found is that if you like and subscribe to this channel, you're guaranteed to pick more winners. In all seriousness, we thank you for your support, both here on the YouTube channel. Also, you may be listening to this at uh, the In The Money Media channel on iTunes as well. We've got a ton of video and audio content planned as we approach the Kentucky Derby. The best way to help, honestly, is just to subscribe to the channel. But we also have a contest I want to let you know about. This is taking place on the YouTube channel. You've got to pick the winners of the three prep races coming up this weekend for the Kentucky Derby, Wood, Bluegrass, Santa Anita Derby. The person who gets all three correct will we'll either win, or if there's more than one of you, we'll do a little bit of a drawing. If two people win, we'll do a drawing amongst the people who pick the ones who yield the two best mutual prices. Anyway, that's all minutia. Really, all you got to do, pick the horse you think is going to win these three races. You'll win a $100 bet on the Kentucky Derby, and uh, we'll reach out to you. So just drop that in the comment. Again, on the YouTube page. Go to the YouTube page in the Money Media. Give us who you think is going to win these three races and have your chance to win that $100 bet. You must be an In The Money newsletter subscriber, but that's real easy. That's free also, inthemoneypodcast.com slash email. Check that out. Best way to keep up with all the content going on on the In The Money media network, inthemoneypodcast.com slash email. First up on the show today, we have the crew that we've assembled for, I think we've done this a couple of times uh, lately, about these key Triple Crown prep races, Kentucky Derby prep races. We'll start off with a man who's not in his usual undisclosed location. He's someplace else. He is from his own eponymous podcast, TV's Matt Bernier. Matt, how are things? Good, Pete. Jonathan, good to see you guys again. Yeah, pit stop in Stamford on my way to Aqueduct on Saturday for our uh Triple cast. All these three races will be on NBC from 4.30 to 6, I think. Very cool. Make sure to check you out on there. And then we also have from not Planet Texas, and it, and it doesn't look like the, the Casa de Rojo either. Um, where in the world are you, Jonathan okay. Kinchin? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. Hold on. I'm going to get this portable uh, computer here. <laughs> I am at an undisclosed disclosed location at Coolmore America. Ashford Stud. I, no, is that no, American no. Pharaoh in the background? What's going on over it, it there? It is not. I think he's somewhere a little safer than back here with us. You, <laughs> Yahoo's probably some $5,000 mayor they, they kept back here next to us. So. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's gorgeous here, obviously. It's good to be back in Lexington. Excited for, for a little Keeneland. I, haven't, I don't think I've been to Keeneland since pre-pandemic. Um, They're not no, going to let you ride stuff. Justify. It doesn't matter how nicely you ask. Breeders, Breeders Cup. That's that was the last time I was here, so uh, that was a fun day. Pete, you, you'll you'll you know where to find me. I'll be downstairs uh, at that uh, at that bourbon bar, trying to spend as much money as possible. Yeah, I've spent a lot of money at that bar. I will be there next week, but I'll tell you from what I remember, it's the the really really crazy stuff is there the first weekend. So you are going to get the spoils, my friend. Let me know. Wait, Let me know oh, what yeah. you drink and if you have any recommendations. We'll see what's left at the fancy bourbon bar down on the first floor by the time we get there. But we're not here to talk about bourbon, as much fun as that is, and as much as I enjoy that topic. We're here to talk about these three races, and we're not. We're going to start where you're going to be tomorrow, Matt Bernier, and that's Aqueduct. There's this cool graded stakes pick four that kicks off in race number eight with the grade two Wood Memorial. Pretty interesting race. Let's start with your thoughts on it, Matt. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a three-horse race. You know, the logical runners in here, Mo Donegal, early voting, Morello. Morello, the question, can he go two turns? Can he get out to a mile and an eighth? He's looked fantastic in all three of his wins so far. Mo Donegal, what do you want to do with the Holy Bull? It seemed like he kind of ran in spots. But to be fair, Pete, you and I, we talked about it. It didn't, didn't feel like Gulfstream was going to be his cup of tea. feels like that true long-winded mile and an eighth, mile and a quarter type. Getting back to Aqueduct should help. I guess I'm going to go with early voting. There's one last piece of information I'd like to see before I really, you know, firm it up. But I, I just I thought his run in the Withers was really good. I know they ended up ticking up that buyer about 10 points from what it was initially registered as. Uh, but a lot of that had to do with the pace. The pace was off the charts fast in that Withers. And yes, he had, he was stumbling down the lane. But I mean, he had every right to be ready to fall down at the end for how fast he went in his second lifetime start, stretching out from a mile to a mile and an eighth. 
Uh, I think he's got a tactical edge in here again, and I hope they just break on top and say, come and catch me. I can see it in terms of backing up in that pick four. Would you use the other two? Is there one you'd take a stand against? Uh, no, I mean, I would probably use all three of them. I, I hate to say it. I think it's a, I can see any one of the three winning again, Morello. He visually has been the most impressive of the three. Mo Donegal, I don't love the whole kind of not start and stop piece. I understand maybe the outside draw in the fountain of youth isn't what they wanted, but he also spiked a little bit of a temp. He missed a, a workout and I just haven't been blown away by the tape of the workouts recently. So I won't be surprised at all if he runs well. He's going to appreciate every inch of the, the mile on an eighth, maybe more so or certainly more so than the other two. Uh, but I just think the tactical edge that early voting has might be enough. I get it. And he's certainly bred to excel going uh, going longer, right? I mean, he, he should he should really appreciate the distance. I'm still going with Mo Donegal, though. This is a horse I've talked about as a potential derby horse since the Remsen and a horse that I'm willing – to excuse the stop and start run last time because it really did seem like that just wasn't a course that suited him. M missed uh, the Fountain of Youth with the fever. And it's, uh, as I wrote in my piece for at the races.com, it's put up or shut up time for this horse, but he's done enough right and shown enough promise that I want to stick around and keep him on side with, uh, with early voting being a horse I certainly want to have uh, as, a, as a backup. And Morello, who I, I respect, but I think at the likely prices, and with, with a little bit more of a question about, um, you know, will that extra furlong be his friend? I'll probably stick with those two. Mo Donegal is the A, early voting is the B. JK, how do you see this one? You know, I, look, I, I mean, I'm, I don't think this is an, uh, a, you know, a race you want to try to get too clever in. I, I think the top three horses are the likely winners. Um, and, and I know that's kind of boring, and but it, I think it's just true. I mean, I think Mo Donegal has shown what he's capable of doing. If he can run the number that he ran back in the Remsen, if Zandon, who we'll talk about in a little bit, is as good as, as some might think, you, you got to think that Mo Donegal sitting on a, a big opportunity and a big race for, for a trainer whose horses continue to improve, it feels like, uh, when they're on their kind of three-year-old years. Early voting, sure, undefeated, speed figures, good enough he stays close he's tactical you know he's like he's a chad brown horse you know they're trained to finish their races and to shut off so i think he'll end up working out a nice trip as well and he's right there from a speed figure standpoint and then i don't really have the, the questions with morello on the distance just looking at his pace figures and the way that he runs and finishes kind of in up lines I, I, he's very likely as well so uh, as boring as it is, I think one of those three horses will win. And I think it'll be price dependent on which one I would play from a win standpoint. Um, in a multi-race standpoint, I, I would need to have all three of them as A horses. And, and I would try to take stands in other races like the Carter uh, with a horse like Speaker's Corner or something like that. And if you're looking for a little bit of a price, the only other horse I thought that was interesting was towards the outside, Barise. For, for Mike Maker, uh, whenever Mike Maker stretches horses out, I always assume that they're going to appreciate it. That's just kind of his thing, putting stamina into horses. I like the outside draw. This horse is tactical. It isn't too far behind from a speed figure standpoint. So um, that would be the kind of B horse that I would use in the sequence. Uh, if you're going to hold my feet to the fire, I would just take Morello um, as the most likely winner. But I think the other two are extremely likely and could offer more value from a price standpoint. It's so funny because I was going to let you off the hook. I'd already written in my little notes for In the Money Plus, JK, no top pick. But since you did, I wasn't going to hold your feet to the fire. But since you held your own feet to the fire, we will pop that in there. Matt mentioned about the, the speed figure being elevated for, um, for early voting out of the Withers. And that was with good reason. When you look at the form of that race, it's been very, very productive. So just wanted to button it up with that before we pivot to where you are. Jonathan, this segment would have worked a lot better if I was out in California, I realize, because then we, we could have really covered it properly around the horn. But alas, uh, the Brooklyn Bunker for me. Let's talk about this bluegrass stakes. I think it's fascinating. And it's so many horses that you have to sort of make a bet on the come. So many horses that are just supposed to run better today than they have in their previous efforts, who any one of them alone in a race, I think I would be attracted to. It gets a little tricky with, uh, with four or five of them in the same spot. Jonathan, where does your dart land in the bluegrass? Yeah, I mean, my dart, my future wager, um, Austin's college fund is is with Zandon here. Um, and, and uh, you know, obviously I'm rooting for Zandon because of the future position, um, you know, but I honestly think that he's the most likely winner of this race as well. I mean, he ran extremely well in the Risen Star. Um, Epicenter is on the top of most people's lists or at least close to the top of most people's lists. 
So that performance actually looks a little bit better than it was considering the way that the trip that Zandon got. And, and uh, he, he looks like he's got a horse that's, that's got a nice foundation that will continue to improve. And um, I, I know that the trainer's confident. Uh, to be fair, I, I reminded Chad that I had a, a future and I was alive for, you know, what I was alive for. And he said, I, I wouldn't sell that ticket for a dollar less. So <laughs> he, he's, ex- he's excited about Zandon's, Zandon's progression. And I, I just, you know, I, I think that he, obviously I want him to, to be a little closer than he was last time, but he's had, he's shown that he can do that in the past. And I think that this is kind of one of those horses that's going to really kind of kick off this, this uh, relationship that I think we're going to see blossom between Chad and Flavian this summer at, at Saratoga. So we talked about you and your relationship with Flavian Pratt on the, the show yesterday with, with Mike Maloney. Did he tell you that when you had lunch yesterday that we were making fun of you? Have you, no, have, I, I, have I, you... I actually missed Mike. I didn't, I didn't get to catch him yesterday, but I'm sure it was funny. Yeah, I do have a, I have a look. Um, I think as a horse player, you, you cannot marry yourself to bad opinions. And I think Flavian's probably improved quite a bit, but I had a, I have had, I admit that I had a bad opinion that he wasn't very good. I think he, I think he is pretty darn good and we'll find out. We'll find out this summer um, how good he really is. But I, I think there's a chance that, that he'll uh, be very competitive uh, at, at Saratoga. There are those that think he has a chance to win the Keeneland riders title. Certainly could get off to a very big start this weekend. Matt Bernier, do you think that's a reasonable goal for Flavian Pratt at this Keeneland meet? Yes, certainly. I mean, you know, it also helps too, and I'm not diminishing talent one way or the other. I mean, it helps if you're going to ride for an outfit like Chad Brown's where you're going to get, you know, the A string as far as talent is concerned. And I know Irad is still there and Jose is still there and Javier is still there, but Flavian fits right in with that group. I think uh, I, I expect, I expect him to produce wherever he goes, honestly, at this point, whether it's Kentucky, whether it's up in New York over the summer, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they kick things off here on Saturday with a big effort from this horse. Um, I guess I'm going to – look, I could look like – I had to mute myself. I, I could look like a real idiot after this race on Saturday. I think the Kentucky Derby winner is coming out of the Risen Star. I think it's one of the top three. It's either Epicenter, it's Smile Happy, or it's Zandon. There's really no one else that I'm overly thrilled with, and I think those three horses all ran bang-up races in the Risen Star. Epicenter's continued to flatter the form. Actually, the Risen Star as a whole. Everyone, six of the seven have come back to improve their buyer next out. You've got a few next out winners in that spot. I think the winner of the Derby comes out of the Risen Star, which means this race basically boils down to Smile Happy or Zandon. In my opinion, I thought Smile Happy was much better than Zandon, and it's not that I didn't think Zandon ran well. It's just I thought Smile Happy got a rather passive ride, and it almost, I don't know. I mean, they waited, 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 finally shot down to the inside, and he outkicked Zandon, and Zandon got the jump on him. I don't know. I, I Part of me thinks that Smile Happy might just be a better horse, but I'm also totally open to the idea that second start off the layoff, Zandon has a giant move forward in him, and he gets the better of Smile Happy. To me, as much as I wanted to make a case for Emmanuel, and I think he'll run much better than he did, I actually thought the Fountain of Youth was a pretty decent race, considering how wide he was. Command performance, I have no idea what, what's happened to him. He just isn't running all that well. I wonder a little bit if it's tactical. Maybe he's actually like, you got to take him back and make a run is supposed to be a length off the pace, but you're really just grasping at straws at this point. For me, smile happy and Zandon. I'm going to go with smile happy. It is a really interesting question because I like both of those horses too. And I did go with Zandon in here with smile happy as the backup. I'm, I'm just like both of you guys. And I guess for me, I was giving Zandon the benefit of the doubt a little tiny bit for what happened last time in terms of, I thought, um, Zandon broke worse and I don't know, just looked, made that middle move. And then the way that he like flattened, I was just going to be completely willing to put down to being tired. And so I was thinking of those as two potential reasons to improve. But then the other thing was drawn four versus drawn 10 here. But I mean, look, I'm splitting hairs. I like both horses immensely. And I was going to give, assuming the price goes crazy, 20 to one, I was going to give command performance just one more try in this spot because we've talked about the trip in the BC juvenile and it was not good. And now last time was ghastly. I mean, it turned over at one to 20, but it's in some weird way. It's almost an auto bet for me when a horse was one to 20 the last day and is 20 to one today, even though, you know, he deserves to be the 20 to one, but it's just, I I'm, I'm not getting 
I'm not getting beat by if Command Performance wins this race and pays forty six dollars. So it, I, I'm gonna have him a little bit in the mix. What do you think of him, J.K.? Uh, if you're one to twenty and I need you for fifteen thousand and you <laughs> you don't win, you we we are done. <laughs> yeah, no bet done. list forever. Yeah, yeah. You can run for you can run for twelve five at Oakland. I still wouldn't play him. <laughs> <laughs> it's fanciful, but it's just it's gonna co- what, the way I'm approaching this. It's gonna cost so little to have a little bit of uh, of scratch put his way. Well, the, o- the only other thing I'll add, I, I do think there's a chance if you're really again you are trying to make a case for why he's run as poorly as he has. And I, I, I get what you're saying about the trip in the Breeders' Cup. I just thought he was terrible. I didn't think it was a trip thing. Um, I, I certain horses don't want to be as close to the pace as others do, and the two two turn races. And that could be another thing. Maybe he's a one-turn horse. But he's been much closer to the pace in those two-turn races, and he just hasn't had anything at the end. Maybe he's the kind of horse that you have to just take to the back, wait, 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 and then try to come with a run. And, look, if you want to take a shot at 20-1, to I'm not going to talk you off. But, I I mean, I've been so underwhelmed by each of the past two performances, it's hard for me to really love him. I get it. I'll tell you what, though. There is a world in which this collapses. So, I yeah, I hope he is further back for that. You know, look, I'm obviously my main interest is going to be in the same horses as you guys. But for that saber, I would agree. If they ask me how, what should you do with this horse? Hold them up, make one run. Hope those, uh, hope those better horses, faster horses, hook up early and uh, make this a tortoise in the hair situation. <laughs> That's what he needs for sure. But I'm just not ruling it out at how little it's going to cost me to cover the scenario. Let's move out to the West Coast, gentlemen. We just have uh, eight minutes left or so. Um, before I know we got to get you out of here, Matt. But we got the Santa Anita Derby. It goes as race number six, 545 Eastern. This is such a funny race for me because I was sh- sure I was going to read it and sure I was going to pick Forbidden Kingdom in the spot who I've already backed to win the Kentucky Derby at odds of around 12 to 1. Um, but I'll tell you what, looking at the race and the way it shakes out, and the likely prices, especially for those of us for whom uh, fixed odds is available, I found myself liking the six uh, Taiba, the ex Baffert now Tim Yak teen runner, a whole lot more than I was expecting to. And rather than take even money to you know six to five, maybe probably even money on Forbidden Kingdom, I think if I was just betting this race individually, I'd roll the dice. Not an easy thing going from six furlongs to nine furlongs. Anybody who's been around horse racing for any amount of time. We'll tell you that, but I wouldn't rule it out with the way this horse shaped on debut and also on his pedigree. I was actually going to go ahead and put Taiba the six up in the Santa Anita Derby boxing uh, the exact, or at least covering the one way forbidden kingdom Taiba three, six as well. JK, I know you're a card carrying member of the forbidden kingdom fan club. Am I nuts? Yeah. I, mean, I basically stopped listening to you when you started talking about another horse besides forbidden kingdom. <laughs> Uh, give the case no that seriously i seriously i i had to start i had to like reverse look at the past performances the relative you're talking about i i think this is the derby winner uh i i told a friend who asked me about taking a guy's trip to the derby this year i said no 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 it's cheaper and it's better just go to the belmont and you'll see a triple crown winner i, I think forbidden kingdom is a freak and um i don't think he'll lose uh you know until maybe the Breeders' Cup. Amazing. Well, big. Uh, you, you you have eclipsed my view of uh, of Forbidden Kingdom. Now, how are you? Have you done anything to head with? Given your financial position on Zandon, have you done anything to like hedge with this idea? No, I mean, I'll, I'll, what I'll probably do. I mean, honestly, is is is, you know, nothing. I'll just. It's just a bonus, a nice bonus to have the Zandon situation. You know, a lot of singling of single A's on Derby Day of, of Forbidden Kingdom. Obviously, I'm not, you know, given he performs at the level I think he'll perform at tomorrow. Um, but no, n- nothing nothing overly clever to, to try to hedge. I mean, we all know on Derby Day, if you're right in the Derby and you can hook together the multis, you're going to get paid. Um, so I'll be fine with that. I was wondering if you could somewhere find some place to give you a price on a, a, a derby exacta cover yourself uh forbidden kingdom over zandon and 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 do it, do it that way matt bernier we'll bring you in for your thought on the santity the derby who's gonna win i i hate this race uh because I, I as good as forbidden kingdom and messier have looked i still have questions about both of them 
And the problem is the alternative, Taba, to your point, Pete, stretching out from six to nine, you know, going up against two legitimately fast horses on the clock, that's not an easy thing to do for a second-time starter going up against winners for the first time. Uh, I guess by default, I'm going to go with Taba. And tell me if I'm wrong. And if I, by the way, if I leave, it's just because I've got a hard out, hard out. But Forbidden Kingdom, I when I watched it live, I said, wow, that San Felipe was unbelievable. But then I said, I, how good is Doppelganger? And I know he ran in spots last week, but I thought all things considered was a terrible effort from him. It I don't know what good. Forbidden Kingdom beat in that race. No, and Messier, if you take the Bob Lewis out, what do you have? You've got a good horse, not a great horse. You got a horse that's earned a, a mid 80 as a two year old. Uh, and that Bob Lewis, by the way, came on an absolute conveyor belt. And horses that go to the front on conveyor belts typically win by a country mile. It's exactly what he did. I'm not saying he needs to have the lead, but I, I don't know. that Both of these horses, I won't be surprised if they hook up and they put on a show and they win by 15 lengths and they both earn 100 buyers and they go into the Derby as the two favorites. I also won't be surprised if, you know, they're a little bit meh. Lackluster. Forbidden Kingdom. What happens if somebody outbreaks him? I know it seems very unlikely given the way that he's run. What happens if Taiba makes the front? I mean, is he going to be able to pass a horse? I have no idea. I just think it, it, it it's a race that I wanted to love, but I hate it because I just don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to sit back and watch and say either I'm going to be way wrong on questioning these two or questioning them with good reason. I, I don't know. It's just a race that I don't I don't particularly love. I got a, I got a great trivia question. Hit us. When was the last time Tim Yachtin had three horses in a grade one? <laughs> Never uh, the twelfth, I think that happened. The twelfth was never exactly. <laughs> is that is that is uh, that the right answer, Jonathan? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. I Probably. mean, am I am I am I never. crazy with laying it out that way with those two? No, no. I mean, obviously, you know, you got to think that there's going to be some team tactics involved. Um, with the horse, I mean, because you know they, they don't think that they're going to rate Tabia to the outside and win the race, so they're going to go and be aggressive. Um, and you know, it, it could set up it could set up for somebody else. And like you said, Forbidden Kingdom's got to show us something. But from a pace figure standpoint, what he's done from a pace figure standpoint, it yeah. screams at the top of your lungs, freak. And so when 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 something like that happens, I just assume that that, that there's an answer to the questions that you've posed, Matt, which are all yeah, good yeah. and reasonable questions. I just feel like what I see on paper and what I've seen from him so far, there's likely an answer to those questions. Very similar to, to like Arrogate, right? It's like. What happens if Arrogate breaks slow in the Dubai World Cup? Well, he's a freak, so he'll figure it out. What happens yep. if he draws the rail in the Travers? Well, he's a freak, and it doesn't matter. And I, I feel like Forbidden Kingdom could blocker be didn't hurt. of that greatness. Did you hear my cheeky remark, Jonathan? I said the blocker <laughs> didn't hurt. Um, <laughs> Matt, we're going to let you – JK, stay with me for a minute because there's a couple more things I want to do here. Okay. But, uh, Matt, let's let you go so you don't have to sweat that. And uh, we will uh, we will see you very soon, my friend. All right, guys. Be well. Good luck. Bye, Matt. All right. So, a couple more questions for you. Do you want – I mean, I think Mandela will love the idea that Taiba is going to be in front of Forbidden Kingdom. I don't think he wants Forbidden Kingdom to be a one-way horse. I think he, he wants him to be able to, to rate. This might be a great situation to learn it. As a backer of Forbidden Kingdom in this race, do you want him to just – go hammer and tongs with Taiba, rip his heart out and go on? Or do you want him to rate kindly and, and move on the turn and blow him away? I, I always vote for the rip their heart out vibe. I, <laughs> you know, and I, and I mean that just because, you know, that's, that's just, I believe that speed is a, is a, is a huge weapon um, and often underutilized in American racing. It's as odd as that might be. Um, I think that when you have a horse that's uniquely talented, like forbidden kingdom, his game is to rip their heart out. Um his, his game is Mike Tyson, knock him out in the first round, not try to go 10 rounds and box with him. Um, and I think by trying to get cued and rating him and doing all of that nonsense, you're, you're asking yourself for, 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 you know, bad things to happen. So yeah, I don't care if he's out there going 44 and change. I don't care. They're all going they, cause they're all going to be going fast. So it's interesting. I mean, I think they'll try to rate him here two, for two reasons, three reasons. One, the bigger, goal ahead where you might not have a chance, might not have a choice. I mean, I guess to your point, you know, Justify just went into lead and did whatever he did, but with the thought that the Derby pace could be even faster with the thought that he hasn't finished his races particularly fast, like in the last eighth and with the hands that he's in, it just seems more of a Mandela yeah. thing. Um, 
But, you know, it's I think either strategy could be a winning strategy. And the other thing I just want to say, I just looked at the Equin Edge morning line that predicts how the public's going to bet. Shockingly, that had Taiba at two to one to the seven to five or something crazy of Forbidden Kingdom. At those odds, I bet Forbidden Kingdom every day and twice on Sunday. It, the only interest was assuming that the morning line guess of the four to one was uh, was maybe going to be correct Absolutely. That, that I put that in. So if the prices are anything like that, if Forbidden Kingdom is odds against six to five, I mean, he would be my pick, but I figured I'd say something different. Then Matt said, said it anyway, so it didn't really work out. JK, have a great opening day at Keeneland. You'll be, uh, you're going to do the cross country for our plus friends this week. We didn't really talk about that. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? You'll, you'll do that. You can do anything you want, but uh, you can do something Keeneland if you, if that's easier, but the cross country is pretty cool. So, okay. Yeah. Cross country. It is Pete. I'm, I'm, I'm about to go get burgooed out real quick though. Okay. Do it to it. We'll talk soon.